Everything is terrible. When you have rioters taking over the U.S. Capitol building, the seat of American democracy, then they, 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 they are rioters. They are not protesters. If you're a criminal, you're a criminal. And this was an attempted act of insurrection. It's the worst thing to happen to the United States of America since 9-11. Is it, is it a joke? Why did he say this? Ben Shapiro describing January 6th as an insurrection. There's no way. I can see the, I can see what he's apparently said. Uh, this is three years ago. I think he. I think he's joking when he says this. No. Uh, hey, hey, Ben. Ben. So I guess the the synopsis of today's show is that everything is terrible. That's that. That's the synopsis. But what we saw yesterday is inexcusable, unjustifiable, awful on every level, disgusting on every level, just terrible, terrible. When you have rioters taking over the U.S. Capitol building, the seat of American democracy, and when you have those rioters saying that they are doing so in the name of the president of the United States. And when you have them doing that to the legislative branch of the government, and when you have those people... They, they people like Ben Shapiro have a job to do, okay? And that job is not to tell everyone your authentic opinions on absolutely everything. Um, that's probably most of it, but in the, when there are times when you have to make a choice between uh, lose a shit ton of your viewers or pander, I feel like you don't get where you are like Ben is without pandering. He's a partisan commentator. People expect something from him. And what's expected of him is not dictated by him. Um, ben is not, if you know anything about Ben Shapiro as a, as a human being, like the way he is with his family or the way he is as a traditional conservative and all that, he, he's not supposed to like Trump. Trump is everything Ben Shapiro despises about uh, America, apart from the fact that he didn't really do anything domestically apart from cut taxes. I think Ben Shapiro maybe likes that. But other than that, as far as social values, he's a degenerate. He doesn't respect the Constitution. He doesn't respect the Democratic vote. He's a liar. He's a fraud. He's a like a he's crude. He's like new money. He's cringe. Like these these are all things that like he's gaudy. These are things that Ben Shapiro should not really like the way that he is. Yeah, because that's why he was a never Trumper at one point. With January 6th, I think it's been interesting to see how a lot of conservative commentators reacted to it at the time and then changed based on how it was being navigated in the media. Because um, some people, I think uh, Infowars was the example, they were being like very, very brazen about it, like very victorious. Actually, even the people who were there, people like Baked Alaska and Chile Fuentes calling it a revolution and like that, they were really excited about it. They were really like on the nose about what they thought they were doing. But because of criminal charges and because of the implications and because of uh, how the fact that it failed, then suddenly it's, oh, you know, just a bit, people got some rowdy, you know, the cops let us in, you know, they let us in. It's a guided tour. For Ben Shapiro, I think this might have been the moment, if he's being sincere here, is that this might have been the moment where he thought Trump was done and the Republicans were going to get someone else. He doesn't really need to throw his lot in anymore. Huh. Like the lady saying, we're storming the Capitol, it's a revolution. Yeah, oh God, I wonder if the the, the person who got maced, <laughs> the one who with the onion, Elizabeth from Knoxville, <laughs> I wonder if she would come out now and say that, yeah, this was just a peaceful protest and uh, anyone who got into the building was just guided. <laughs> because at the time, it was all very much this vibe. Like, this is what a lot of people there was talking like, right? And people who were commenting. What happened to you? I got maced. You got maced. By, by the police. <laughs> and what happened? You were trying to go inside yeah, the Capitol? Yeah, I, I made it like a foot inside and they pushed me out and they maced me. What's your, what's your name? Where are you from? My name is Elizabeth. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. And why did you want to go in? <laughs> We're storming the Capitol. It's a revolution. Thank you. Why did they mace me? We're storming the Capitol. Is I, oh, God, does she have a Twitter account? It would be so interesting to hear how she talks about January 6th today. People say she had an onion in her hand. Now, I was going to ask... People were saying she did it to herself, you know, with the onion to act like she was persecuted or whatever. Um, but I wonder, um, with the onions, uh, what's the fucking thing? Hmm. Great March of Return. One of the things that the Palestinians were doing when they were running towards the fence was they had onion plants like underneath a mask, like on, like little fucking onions or was it, was it onions? It was, wasn't it? Underneath a mask because it neutralized uh, tear gas. 
Is it the same with mace? Is the idea that if you use an onion, it would um, it would help to like because it what well, makes you cry, so you like flush out the fucking the mace, which is worse than the onion. Is that the idea? I thought they would use um for mace, you would use milk. I thought that's what people did. That's not how that works. That's why I'm wondering why does it work for tear gas? Why does uh, why do onions work for tear gas? Onions provide relief against there were Reddit questions about it and shit. What the fuck? I know because remember, remember this guy, the, the fucking kid, the kid from the Great March of Return, who wore this mask, the onion plant mask, and Hania was like, <laughs> Hania, peace be upon him. Uh, Hania was like, "Good job, kid. <laughs> here's a here's a present. This kid, this that's him with a fucking onion plant mask. Look at it. It's like you can see the the roots sticking out, the sprout. I don't know what you call it." See that? It's because it helps with tear gas. But how does it help with tear gas? What does it do? What do onions do to tear gas? Onions and tear gas, the Boston Globe. <laughs> this is a bit of a tangent. Maybe she thought the onion would help in the same way it helps with tear gas? I don't know. Oh, shit. Hey, come on. <laughs> cooking onions destroys the enzymes so cooked onions can be cut without causing crying uh, what? there are claims that holding a cut onion near the eyes and nose helps protect them from tear gas whether this is true is uncertain if it is true the chemistry involved is not clear hmm okay <laughs> who the fuck wrote this I once walked through the remnants of tear gas cloud in Peru well after a protest had cleared out and it was not fun I would keep away from any variety of tear gas. Okay. <laughs> Good advice. I don't know. Whatever. Tangent. Then they, they are rioters. They are not protesters. Okay. As soon mm. as you commit an act of vandalism or violence, you are no longer in the category of protester. You are now a rioter. And unlike some folks who have justified riots based on the perspective of the rioters, if you are a criminal, you are a criminal and you should go to jail. You should go to jail. And this was an attempted act of insurrection. Oh. I mean, technically speaking, that's what it was, considering that the reason that this happened is because Congress was simply there doing their constitutional duty and tabulating the state certified electoral count. And yeah, that's all they were doing. They do not have the power. Congress does not have the power, as I've been saying all week long. Congress does not and never did have the power to simply overturn. Apparently, a lot of misconceptions exist on how to combat tear gas. People even use lemon juice in the eyes in Turkey. <laughs> Where's the energy now? Well, it helps the Democrats, and Trump is still there. Trump is still there. That's why he has to say this. He needs to stay in the job. State Bruh. electoral college certified results. That is not a legal thing for them to do. Vice President Pence did not have that power. Congress did not have that power. It was not going to happen anyway, even if you thought they had that power, because Democrats control the House of Representatives. So all of that was tomfoolery. It was nonsense. Tomfoolery. And folks who believed that it wasn't nonsense and decided that they were going to commit an evil act. It is an evil act to invade the seat of government and do violence to people. It turns out we now have over a dozen police officers who are injured. There are four people who are dead. One person was shot. Three people died in medical emergencies yesterday. Th that's as bad an event as I've ever seen. What? I thought, I remember on the day thinking like five people died or the day after, it's two days after or whatever. Um, but then it, somehow every death became like, oh, this one was actually because of like a, a heart problem or this one was because of uh like a meth overdose or this one was because someone committed suicide like months later, one of the cops. Um, <laughs> because I guess Republicans wanted to to lower the death toll. But wasn't there someone who was getting trampled and they died of a heart issue, but they just say that it was a pre-existing condition. So they're, that's not really caused by the riot. Um, is that really the case? Is that the Republican, that the pro-January 6th people, the defenders tried to lower the death toll by basically saying that two or three of the people who died were just because they were, like, fucking fat, or what? <laughs> the direct death that everyone, that everyone agrees on was uh, Ashley Babbage, because she was shot by the cops. <laughs> the guy that got caught in the door, did he die or did he kill himself? Was she shot, though? Yeah, she was shot, yeah. Or maybe she died of cringe, I don't know, yeah, who knows. At least one of the people who trampled the lady with the Don't Tread on Me flag did it on purpose. Really? Uh, okay. A faithful fatality. In American public life, frankly, I think that in, in many ways, it's the worst thing to happen 
to the United States of America since 9-11. It's, it's, it was cataclysmically awful. Cataclysmically awful. Obviously, cataclysmically a very different awful. sort of thing, considering that 9-11 was a, a, in a foreign terror attack ending with mass carnage and mass death. But the grave damage done to the sense of democracy, to the, to the propriety of a republic, and to the functional workings of our government yesterday, it was pretty awful. It was pretty awful. Now, the, this is the day after. The American system is robust and bounced back within hours. Thank mm, God. Thank God. But that does not diminish the importance of what happened yesterday, which, again, was, was bad on every single level. So let's start from the very beginning, because that's a very good place to start, as Julie Andrews might say. So yesterday. Interesting. What does he say about January 6th more recently? Tucker Carlson's January 6th footage one year ago. So I'm guessing this is where Trump is still there. I watched the Congressional Committee hearing so you didn't have to. Oh, which one of these? Ah, Tucker or the hearings? Probably the Tucker one because it's like 1.3 million views. It's more recent as well. There were two real major revelations. So that video we just saw was the day after. Okay. From Tucker last night. And they have to do with two major sort of visual and, and also factual claims that were made by the Democrats, by Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney on the January 6th committee, and by the media. So claim number one was that QAnon Shaman was... Oh, this is going to be... It's going to be nitpicking, I think. It's probably... Wait. Oh, the Lex clip with him and uh, Stephen. To it. And when all of them looked into it and reported back to him, no, we found nothing. What? And unless we're going to literally is make the concession right? that... Oh, I don't know where this One of be. the big issues in this presidential election is going to be January 6th. It's in the news now, and I think it's going to get become bigger and bigger and bigger. So question for Destiny first. Did Donald Trump incite an insurrection on January 6th, 2021? Absolutely. Uh, this is probably ignoring every other issue we've talked about, which I think there are plenty that I would say disqualify Trump from holding office. Um, I think that the conduct and the behavior leading up to and including January 6th, I think is wildly indefensible. I am excited to see Ben <laughs> try to, uh, yeah. The, uh, the, the three to four stages are the... Um, the taking what I think any reasonable person would say, knowingly false information about elections being rigged or ballot boxes being stuffed or Ruby Freeman, you know, running ballots three times in Georgia, taking that knowingly false information and trying to call uh, state secretaries and stuff to, to have them flip their electoral vote. That was horrible. Um, the plot that Eastman hatched in order to have these like false slates of electors where all seven states had citizens go in and falsely say that they were the... The clip we just watched, I don't think Ben Shapiro ever said Trump knowingly lied, did he? He said it was worse than 9-11 in some ways, which is very interesting. Um, but I wonder, because Ben Shapiro, again, he's got to do his job. I think in this video, the, the one thing he's heard Stephen he say here, that's probably the easiest one to attack from a debate perspective, is say like, well, how do you know Trump uh, knew he was lying? He could have just been such a narcissist, and then he could just like divert the conversation towards that without having to concede anything else. This is what he does, isn't it? Duly elected uh, electors that could submit votes to Congress. That was insane. Uh, that happened. Um, asking or begging Pence to accept these false states of electors initially, and then just say, you should just throw it out completely and throw it to the House delegation, which was majority Republican. That was absolutely unbelievable. And then on the day of January 6th, trying to capitalize on the violence by him, Giuliani, and Eastman making phone calls to senators and congressmen saying, well, don't you think maybe you guys should delay the vote a little bit? You know, don't you think they're just really mad about the election? I think he said to McCarthy, they're more upset than you. Um, and, and his utter dereliction of duty and not doing anything to uh, stop the, the rioting that happened on January 6th because he was too busy taking advantage of it. I think all of these things are horrible. Uh, I look forward to seeing the uh, Jack Smith indictments play out in court, uh, maybe even the Georgia Rico case. But um, yeah, I think all of these things are un unfathomable. And I think when you look at the plot from start to finish, clearly the goal the entire time was to circumvent the peaceful transfer of power. That was the goal from start to finish, whether it was through false claims, whether it was through illegal schemes, or whether it was through violence at the Capitol to delay the certification of the vote. Ben? <laughs> so I'm glad you're excited. It's always fun. Uh -huh. So um, th there are two elements to incitement of insurrection. One is incitement, the other is insurrection. Uh, so incitement has a legal standard, so does insurrection. Mm. Neither of those standards are met. So if you're asking me, Ooh. morally speaking, did Donald Trump do the right thing between November 4th and January 6th? I said, I will continue to say no, he did not. I think he was saying things that are false. Uh, with just so when you say I said and will continue to say, is it kind of like he's uh, acting as if he hasn't made a pivot there? Like, he's, he's quite clear in this. He's quite unequivocal in this video, right? Go to jail. And this was an attempted act of insurrection. I mean, technically speaking, that's what it was, considering that the reason that this happened is because Congress was simply there doing their constitutional duty and tabulating the state certified electoral count. And yeah, that's all they were doing. They do not have the power. Congress does not have the power, as I've been saying all week long. Congress does now he's not. saying to try and stop the uh, certification. Again, um, this is what Trump wanted them to do. How, ca how can you say Trump didn't have anything to do with this? That's what he wanted. And never did. 
have the power to simply overturn state electoral college certified results. That is not a legal thing for them to do. Vice President Pence did not have that power. Congress did not have that power. It was not going to happen anyway, even if you thought they had that power because Democrats control the House of Representatives. So all of that was tomfoolery. It was nonsense. And folks who believed that it wasn't nonsense and decided that they were going to commit an evil act. It is an evil act to invade the seat of government and do violence to people. It turns out we now have over a dozen police officers who are injured. There are four people who are dead. One person was shot. Three people died in medical emergencies yesterday. That's as bad an event as I've ever seen in American public life. Frankly, I think that in in many ways, it's the worst thing to happen to the United States of America since 9-11. Since 9-11, okay. It was cataclysmically awful. Cataclysmically awful. Obviously, a very different sort of thing considering that 9-11 was a, a... in a foreign terror attack ending with mass carnage and mass death. But the grave damage done to the sense of democracy, to the to the propriety of a republic, and to the functional workings of our government yesterday, it was pretty awful. It was pretty awful. Now, the Americans... Wow. And now he's just saying not insurrection at all. Like. Uh, so incitement has a legal standard. So does insurrection. Neither of those standards are met. So if you're asking me, morally speaking, did Donald Trump do the right thing between November 4th and January 6th? I said, I will continue to say, no, he did not. I think he was saying things that are false, uh, with just factually false about his theories with regard to the election, about the election being stolen, about fraud. This is all adjudicated in court. He did not even bring many of the claims that he's brought publicly and all the rest of that. If we're talking about incitement of insurrection as a legal standard, it doesn't meet any of those standards. When it comes to incitement, it has to be immediate law, incitement to immediate lawless action. That's the standard for incitement. And I'm very meticulous in how I use this because I happen to speak publicly a lot. And that means there are lots of people who listen to me, which means some of those people are probably crazy. And some of them may go and do a crazy thing. Did I incite them? The media tends to use the word incitement very loosely with regard to this sort of stuff in the same way that Bernie Sanders quote, unquote, incited the congressional baseball shooting. He did not. So Bernie's- why does he think... Why does he think the day after January 6th that they were there to stop the certification of the uh, of the Electoral College votes? The counting of the electoral college, but why does he think that? Not certification, just the counting of them. Why does he say that? And the why do you say that just the day after January six? Who, who put that idea in their heads? Do you think they did that themselves? Do you think they learned about the electoral count act and everything else and the legal theories? Did who put that idea in their heads? Was it the people who maybe spoke about it on the day to them, like Giuliani, like Eastman, like Trump? Hmm. Sanders has a lot of things I disagree with. I think Bernie's a schmuck. Doesn't matter. He's specifically talking about Trump. Yeah, but how did they get those opinions in their heads? Where that was Trump. Trump told them to go to the Capitol with that in mind, with stopping the certification of the votes, the fucking counting of the votes. God. He did not incite that. So saying bad things is not the same thing as inciting violence. Inciting violence, the legal standard of the United States is, I want you to go punch that guy in the face. That's, that's inciting. Uh, or is he regard- just trying to make it a very strict legal argument, even though in the first video he just said this was technically an insurrection? Okay. <laughs> But not legally, only technically. Okay. To insurrection, typically in insurrection, and there are some descriptions in case law, though none in statutory law, as far as I'm aware. The typical description in case law is the replacement of one legitimate government of the United States with another by violent means. The the notion that Donald Trump coordinated any such insurrection is belied by the FBI itself. The FBI put out a report in uh, I believe it was August of 2021 suggesting that there was no well coordinated insurrectionist attempt coordinated by the White House. Uh, in fact, what you had was Donald Trump thrashing around like that weird alien in uh, the movie Life. I don't know if you ever saw Jake Gyllenhaal, where he's like kind of thrashing up against this glass box, just an alien just thrashing up against the glass box. Uh, that, that that I think is, is more what you were seeing from November 4th to January 6th. Um, um, and then, again, the claim that January 6th itself was an insurrection. So virtually, I'm not aware that anyone was charged with actual insurrection. There were some people who were charged with seditious conspiracy. There are insurrection statutes that do exist. No one was charged under those particular statutes. Um, you know, they, there were some people who you could say informally had insurrectionist ideas. Those would be the people who want to hang Nancy Pelosi or kill Mike Pence. And those people are in jail right now. Uh, and the election went forward. The election was certified. Mike Pence presided over the certification. Mitch McConnell presided over the certification. Joe Biden has been the president for the last three years. So the Donald Trump, by the way, was still president at that point. If he had actively wanted to do what other people who have actually launched coups have done, he would have theoretically called the National Guard not to put down the riot, but to actually depose the, the sitting government of the United States. In the name so of- now he's just saying that it was like, it's, it's, he just didn't do it in this way that I suggest he would. Because again, there's reasons that the National Guard weren't used. Uh, I don't think Trump even necessarily knew that the National Guard would be able to take his side. I think he did tell Milley that he was considering having the National Guard in to protect his people, but <laughs> um, he didn't make like a proper request. So, yeah. But that doesn't matter though. Like you don't get let off the hook for doing it badly. Like it doesn't change things because you do it badly. Of a specious legal theory. He did not do that. He did not attempt that. Nobody working for him did that. The, the most you can say, I think about what everybody was doing is that, you know, and I want to say everybody, we can talk about Trump because it's really about Trump. He used a phrase that, that Trump was disseminating knowingly false information. The word that's carrying a lot of weight there is the word knowingly. Um, mm. So knowingly implies a knower. Do I think it's the information who's disseminating false? Yes. putting up. Okay. Yeah, it's just it's very interesting. I, I I imagine he changed to this more soft position on it because Trump didn't go. Trump still had control of the Republican Party, and I think after January 6th, Ben Shapiro was probably expecting 
that to be like the nail in the coffin and for Trump to get fucked off and for them to bring back someone who's a bit more uh, <laughs> acceptable by Ben Shapiro's moral and aesthetic standards. Uh, anyway, anyway, God, what a tangent.